Were you guys there in uh, Cell Bio the other day? Oh yeah, I know. He's such a jerk. Oh. He knows everything, sucks up to the teacher all the time. I just sit next to him, I just want to punch him in the face sometimes. Okay. As much fun as this is, I gotta go. I'll see you guys later. See ya. Bye. Oh, hey guys, Sean Mount from Brian sucks. <laughs> of course. You would not believe what he did to me. Seriously. So, you know how I left my computer on my desk last week and I went to lab? Yeah. Well, apparently while I was gone, he came in, took my cell bio final, the paper we wrote, and then copied it and turned it in with his name on it. So now, I turn in mine, and Dr. Kwok thinks that I copied him, so we're both going to the Honor Council. Who are they going to believe? Me. I didn't even go here. Or him. He's like on first name basis with everyone. It's always Bill Higgins. He and Bill went to Alaska. He and Bill went to South America or Australia or something. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got your back. Don't worry. I mean, pound it up. Pound it up. God, seriously, I want to pound something in it's Brian's face. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill Brian Fleming. So what are you going to do if they uh, find you guilty? I don't know. I mean, I guess we're going to get kicked out of school, or at least I am. I'm sure he's going to be fine. You guys talking about Fleming? <sighs> yes. Nobody can hate, hate him more than I can. You know what he did? Nobody like, either. I, I, I went to the morning to see my girlfriend, and turns out Brian Fleming has been sleeping with my girlfriend. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, I even had a ring, and I was about to propose to her like tomorrow night, but then it turns out, oh my God. So yeah, next time I see Brian, he's dead. Gosh, the guy is such a jerk. Could anyone be a bigger pig? Pig? That sounds familiar. We must be talking about Brian, right? Yeah. I, I'm just so, so angry right now. I can't even talk about it. What did he do? Oh my gosh! Is, okay, so you know how I was supposed to get that scholarship if I could just rotate in Dr. Alexander's lab? Uh-huh. Okay, so Brian finds out about that and decides it would be a great idea to go and talk to him and say, Oh, Dr. Alexander, I think I would be the best candidate for this position. And so he gives him the last freaking position. What? Yeah, <gasps> serious? Yeah, so now I don't have any room, I don't have space to go in there until next year and I lose my funding. I don't even know how I'm going to pay for school. I'm so angry. Honestly, I'm just going to I'm just gonna stab him in the throat. Seriously. I'm going to kill him. He's an on pig, yeah. Ah. Uh, Okay, do we have anything planned for the rest of the day? Well, I know I do. I've got to work on this paper. Uh, okay. What's up, peons? There. Lovely, so. How are you doing? Stop. Stop. Oof. So, yeah, working in Dr. Alexander's lab is getting so tired. I mean, I come in at like 10 o'clock, work for a few hours. I already have two papers coming out. I Probably can't. I best. can't be here. I'm just going to leave, okay? Hey, where are you going? I'm going to go to Union. Are you right. going to work your second job since you didn't get funded? <sighs> uh, it happens. Alright, now you can be a learner. Oh my god, I think you're going to throw up my mouth a little bit. I'm so going to hurt you. Can you keep it down? I'm trying to work. What are you working on, your paper? I uh, see, I'm already done mine, so I, I don't know what it's like. I hate to see her go, but I love to see her walk away. No. Why, not getting enough? Uh, I guess it's just man time. Oh, you're doing the crossword? I'm already done. You can have the answers if you want. Can you leave me too? Come on, don't be like that. I thought we were brothers. It's alright. More time for me. Brian Fleming must die. 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 He's dying. <laughs> Not this kid. <laughs> Ow. Did you guys read the Ted Lyle paper yet? Yeah, I did. I don't think I've read through it. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> ah! Oh my god. He's dead. Um, should we get off the sheets now? Isn't she out of the Turk Detectives? Okay.
Terp Tective, an elite on-campus crime-solving unit led by Dr. Patricia Shields. Dr. Shields, this looks like suspect's blood. It's going away from Brian. <gasps> oh, well, then you better collect a specimen. Christy, can you hand Zena a uh, swap? Sure can. No skin under the fingernails, Dr. Shields, but I'm still looking. Okay, do that. PCR, or the polymerase chain reaction, is a technique used to multiply one piece of DNA into many, many copies of DNA in a test tube. And so we're going to demonstrate how that's done by looking at this group of pieces of DNA. And each color represents a different fragment of DNA. PCR consists of three main stages. The first stage is known as the denaturation stage. And that's when we start with DNA that exists like this, double-stranded DNA. The temperature is raised and this will bring about the separation of the two strands of DNA into single-stranded DNA. This is usually accomplished by raising the temperature to approximately 95 degrees. Okay, well our temperature has been raised to 95 degrees and as you can see, our DNA has separated into single-stranded DNA. And into our reaction mix, now remember all of this is taking place in, in a test tube. And in the test tube you're going to be adding several different things. All of this is taking place in a buffer and the buffer has been composed of many different ingredients. But there are going to be several things that are very important to add. You're going to have a thermal stable uh, DNA polymerase and there are actually many different thermal stable polymerases these days but the first thermal stable DNA polymerase that was isolated is called TAC polymerase and this is was isolated from a microorganism called uh, Thermus aquaticus and TAC polymerase will work at very high temperatures to elongate DNA. Now also added to this would of course be all the nucleotides that you need that we'll be adding to an exposed 3'N. But as you know, DNA polymerases do not add de novo. They have to be adding to an exposed 3' hydroxyl group. So the other thing that you need to add are primers. So in this case, the piece of DNA that we want to elongate, the piece that we want to amplify are going to be our black strands of DNA. So to the polymerase, to this reaction mix, we want to add primers that are going to anneal to these pieces of DNA. And we want to add an excess of primers to our reaction mix. The next stage in PCR is called the annealing stage. And the temperature drops from 95 degrees, which was our denaturation stage, to about 55 degrees or so. Now, the actual annealing temperature will vary based on uh, the product that you're looking for. Now, in this particular case, we're looking to amplify our black product. And so all of our PCR primers here are going to anneal very specifically. So in this case, this PCR primer is going to anneal only with this strand here. And this PCR primer will only anneal to this strand here once we drop the temperature to that low temperature. None of these PCR primers that are around here will anneal to any of these other PC, these DNAs because as you know, the annealing process is a very specific complementary base pairing process. And as long as I've designed my primers very specifically and I keep the temperature high enough um, in the annealing stage, this should be a very specific reaction.
Once the annealing has occurred, the last stage is what we call the elongation stage. And this is where the temperature is raised back up to 72 degrees. And this is when elongation occurs. 72 degrees is the optimum temperature for the polymerase, and in this case it's TAC polymerase, to elongate at the three prime end. So DNA nucleotides will be added and we will get chain elongation. At the end of chain elongation, where we once had one double-stranded piece of DNA, we now have two. And now we will take the temperature back up to 95 degrees for the second cycle. These two will separate, and these two will separate. And then we will take the temperature back down to 55 degrees, and then Primers will anneal here, and here, and here, and here. Once again, the primers will not anneal to any of the other DNA strands that are coming about. And then what will happen will be the temperature will be taken back up to 72 degrees. And at that point in time, our TAC polymerase will come in. And once again, we will get chain elongation. Oops, well the TAC polymerase is a very feisty enzyme. All right, so at the end of two cycles of PCR, we now have four molecules of DNA. At the end of three rounds, we will have eight molecules of DNA. So as you can see, as PCR continues again and again, we continually double the amount of DNA that we make. And this is how PCR works. After several rounds of amplification, we can see that the preponderance of DNA in my sample is going to be the sample that I'm interested in, and that is the black DNA. In a typical DNA amplification scheme, after 20 rounds of cycling, you will amp the piece of DNA that you're amplifying, you'll have about a million copies. After 30 rounds of amplification, the you will have approximately a billion copies of the DNA that you're interesting, interested in. PCR is a very powerful tool and is often used in forensic work. Another technique that's used in forensics and that's used in combination with PCR is RFLP. RFLP stands for Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphisms. And so to give you an idea of how that's used, uh, I have a little example set up here. So this represents two pieces of DNA. And um, so let this represent uh, a piece of DNA found on uh, a normal uh, human chromosome, for example. And um, all humans uh, may have this piece of DNA. Um, and we can amplify this piece of DNA in all humans using PCR method that we've already discussed. Most humans have this. And so they have these three restriction enzyme sites that are illustrated here. And so this is ECHO R1. And it, most, in this piece that we've amplified, most people have these three restriction sites. But over time, some mutations have occurred. And so on this second piece down here, I've given one of these changes that might have occurred. And when these changes occur, you actually get, in some cases, as is illustrated here, one of the restriction sites no longer happens. 
This is what we mean by restriction fragment like the polymorphisms. People who have lost this restriction site, they will get a different restriction fragment length. All right, so let's see how this shows up when we amplify these pieces using PCR and then we cut these pieces using the restriction enzyme. And in this case, that restriction enzyme is uh, Echo R1. Okay, so we're going to look at our first piece and we're going to cut this with Echo R1. And when that happens, this one would cut here. Again, remember Echo R1 is a sticky leave sticky ends, all right? So when we do this, we end up with this first piece will be about this big. The second piece will be about this big. Third piece is the biggest piece in the lot. And then we end up with this pretty small piece. So when we run this on a gel, the largest piece will be at the top of the gel. And then the next biggest piece, followed by the next size, and then the smallest. Well, let's see what happens with the piece where the mutation has occurred and we've lost that. So once again, I'm going to cut where the digest would occur. This piece is not cut because we've lost the Echo R1 site. And then down here, we're going to cut again. And so here, this again would band at exactly the same site on a gel as this site because it's the same size piece as we know. This piece over here is the same size as this piece here. And so we would expect that to be in the same size area as there. But now, this piece here we see is larger than any piece that is, has already banded. Right? And so we have a much bigger piece. And so this would be at a much higher place in our gel.